Hey everyone, my name is Kelly Wolf and welcome back to Homestuck. So we saw some weird stuff happen in the intermissions with the beta kids, but it's just basically them doing weird stuff for like the whole year, but I guess we'll just see them next year because for now we're going to proceed with Act 6, Act 3. Are those water sounds? It's like someone's has like a faucet open or something. I don't know what these are. Are these one of the planets or land of crypts and helium? It's Loka. That's a new one we haven't seen before. Oh, it's just it's just Jane. Okay. Land of crypts and helium is Jane's planet. Where, wherever your house is now, it's sinking in a hurry. Uh, yeah, no way she could jump that far. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just, we're just gonna say bye-bye to the house then. Even though all the stuff we need is there. That's very inconvenient. Are these options that actually let you choose where to go, or is it just like replaying the scene again? Oh, okay. Cool. Super bizarre. Good god, there's so many choices and paths to go. Let's go here first. Hey, it's the buddy. Little Sebastian, what are you doing all the way out here? It looked like you were going down with the ship. Your fidgety little legs sure do help you get around fast. This is like one of those old flashes where you can like move around your planet, but now it's like with uh, set paths, I guess. Anyway, you shouldn't be dancing around here in the middle of nowhere unsupervised like this. You should come along. Take little Sebastian. Yes, capture logged. Can't take anything else. <laughs> Answer you, you. Oh, okay. Super weird. Uranium Umbra, you, you, Vian, cheering, gutsy gumshoe, GG. Huzzah! You did it! Oh, hello. Did what exactly? Made it to Loka, your own personal planet inside the game, tailored to your personal quest. I've observed you here before, of course, but this is the first time I've contacted you here. Better to keep things on the up and up, vis a vis, our mutual linearity, no? Sure. Sure? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm still feeling a little overwhelmed by what just happened. A giant pit seems to have swol swollen my house whole. My dad is missing too. Is your dad inside the house? That would be bad. I think I should try to find him as soon as possible. I understand. Pardon my grumpy demeanor. I just had a nap and did not sleep well. Is it like when she goes to the nap the other person is active? Y you know, the other you you? Haha, <laughs> you call this grumpy? Wasn't I being? Not exactly. Well good. I do my best. Really. As if my dreadful nap were not bad enough, I woke up to find my co-player has made a terrible mess in here. But the good news is, he has at least agreed to play with me once and for all. Some people make nothing easy. That's good. But wait, I thought you said you've never met him. Um, I haven't. Not in person. Then how did he make a mess in there? Did he break into your room while you were asleep? Oh, yes. Well, hmm. The thing with that is this. The thing with that is that we should talk about something else. Huh? Why must you be such the vigilant gumshoe, Jane? Always with the gumshoolery, pitch that puzzle savvy toward the conundra glitter about your planet. I'm becoming grumpy again, do forgive me. 
What do you think of the place by the by? Uh, I think you're being a little fishy and weird, you you. Uh, your new home. Oh, it's rather desolate. Pretty eerie, actually. I haven't run into anyone at all. I think I might be alone here. Yes, isn't it great? The balloons are nice, I suppose. Reminds me much of home. So peaceful. So much space to yourself and time to think. You're so lucky. I can't wait to get to my planet. Yes, but what about your brother? Right, that. About that. Get a run. Ta. Kisses. All that stuff. Hey! You're in the umbra, you you. Cease cheering. Gutsy gumshoe. GG. <laughs> I love how it says close tab of two playing game in original tab. Okie dukes. I guess we answer you you then. Continuing on, all these weird holes. You can't see a thing in any of these holes. It's too dark. Maybe if you could find some way to shine a light down there. Uh, I don't have a flashlight though. A creature carved into the side of the hill. Probably a member of an ancient species that went extinct long ago, leaving behind the remains of this ancient civilization. Another one of these colorful, buoyant pods emerging from its hole. Thousands of these things roam around, seeding and watering the planet, yet nothing grows. Maybe because the hole too dang big. But they also got reserve here. I guess we'll just take the other path now then. Some kind of weird tomb with secret rate rating. Oh, actually, hold up. Can I look at these? Uh, I don't think so. Answer Roxy. I said answer Roxy. Why is it not working? Oh, did it open the tab already? Tipsy nostalgic TG began pestering gutsy gumshoe GG. J Crocs. Urgent cors correspondence for Professor BFFC is over. Roxy, you won't believe where I am right now. Bet you I will. Okay, maybe you will, but I'm in the game finally. It's considerably more outlandish than I was expecting. What were you expecting? For magic not to be real or something? Lo, what a dope. No, I was thinking. Well, I don't know. Something more like... Wow, okay, shush. Jane, I actually don't have any time. I have literally like one minute. I only wanted to ask one thing. Did you talk to Jake? About, you know. Do I even need to wonk? That's why you're contacting me? Yes. Hur hey, hurry. <laughs> Roxy, please. I don't think you understand. There are mysteries here. Real mysteries and puzzles to solve. That's cool. So how to go with Jake? Groan. Did Doc Croc practice her love medicine on the English patient? Hardly. If you really want to know, I completely blew with him forever. Satisfy? Ah, uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> he asked me if I liked him, and in the heat of the moment, I panicked and said no. And then he went on this whole thing about dirt, and that's that. Can we drop it now? <laughs> Jay, this is total the shittiest love report I ever heard. It's not a love report. Will you stop it? Jane, I'm pissed. I am so pips about this I want to just go there and smack your ass. You had him and oh Jane, sign. The only reason I got to cut short on ripping you a new one of over, over this debacle is the fact that everything is literally on fire right now. What? There's a fire? No Jane, there's a fire when Yog go camping and pet Marsh Malmo's while smiling like an asshole. The whole neighborhood is burning down. By which I mean uh, literally every single fucking building. Gotta go. Oh gosh, please be careful. Still just... Sm what the hell was I supposed to be? Some about this Jake thing? Ugh. Tipsy nostalgic TG cease pestering gussy gumshoe GG. Well that's that. Whole building burning, I mean, whole neighborhood burning down. It is a young sea pod yet to be released to the surface. Looks like it needs a lot more helium. That is so weird. The switch has no power, it does nothing. You flip it up and down a bunch, and nothing just keeps on happening. Nothing over this. A little chamber full of bones. You guess the remains of an old salamander or something. This is just such a piss poor burial job. 
It's not even a burial job. There's a skull weighing this thing down. Could be an obvious booby trap. Gonna take some bravery to swipe it. What do you say? Take Salamander skull. Of course, I'm gonna take it. What? Is, is that a... Is that a weird tower? The door is locked. There is a strange symbol on it which you find mysteriously alluring. The more you look at it, the more you think it's just so cool. You could totally see wearing that thing on a shirt. Yeah. Isn't, the, isn't that the breath symbol? Okay, something opened, so I gotta go out and find that. More old stone tablets. They say, when the heart looks northwest, my seed pod will rise. I am so proud of it. As a pod uses up its water, it becomes lighter and lighter. It eventually floats away into the medium. It's said that some very lucky few will eventually reach Skya itself. If you have a wish, you could carve it into the pod. If it reaches Skya, your wish will come true. I want to carve something, but I can't think of what to wish for. Maybe some delicious bugs? Think, imagination. The one time I really need you. Okay, who carved that? Carving stuff is even harder than drawing stuff, and frankly, you're not even sure even Skya can deliver on this. Is that supposed to be Jake? Okay. Time to get out of this and find where that was. It was probably just a place with, with like the whole, the, all the holes. I should just go here first, I guess. Or should I go the other way first? Eh, it shouldn't matter, I think. Our people have waited for centuries for the four nobles to arrive. And it seems we will wait centuries more. We will wait so long that apparently we will all die waiting. That's what we're supposed to do, they say. It's just a big waiting game up in here. And when the nobles finally arrive, then apparently they have to wait too. We're told they cannot summon the speaker of the vast croak without help, so they must wait for another four to arrive. Gods, they say. Together they will raise the speaker and fight invincible demons, I think? I used to think I understood our folklore. It made me happy to think about greeting the maid. But then it all changed, and now it's kind of complicated and distressing and sad. Oh well, I'll just keep building crypts and carving tablets like I'm told. Are these the salamanders that carved it? It's yo, you are re digging this. It me as I'm dead. Dang, what the who carved this? Car carving stone is hard. I want to go back to farming pots. Nah. That's too bad, bro. New words of wisdom from the elders. From Hamera's lips to our slimy amphibious ears, the nobles will arrive one by one. First to Loka, that's Jane, and then to Lopan, then comes Lotak, followed by Lomax. One by one, the nobles will come, only to discover the remains of those who worshipped them and paved the way for their arrival. But then, it is their duty to pave the way for others. For those from the planets through the glass, whatever that means. Loas, Lolar, Lohak, Lofa, these are the other kids' planets. You know what? That's too many letters. The alphabet confuses me sometimes. When times were simpler, we called them the Four Heroes. Our stories were so much happier and easy to understand, but we were living in delusion. When it became clear the heroes could not fulfill their destiny by some cosmic flaw, they became known as the Nobles. It pretty much means the same thing, but it's the title more commonly reserved for martyrs or tragic figures who toil in futility. The new scripture states it will require divine intervention for the Nobles to achieve victory. So there's at least one thing to be hopeful for. Unfortunately, a more recent tenet of our ever-unfolding myth states that the aspect of hope itself is dead on arrival, so... So... it sounds hopeless. This tablet contains an enthusiastic story about the maid of life, who is obviously you. It seems the author doesn't really understand human physiology. In the story, you are blowing bubbles in excitement, and there are allusions to the shiny layer of slime coating your skin. You can't read anymore. Fanfiction written by any species is always a tough read. <laughs> oh yeah. It is strange to think the only one alive left in the land to greet the maid will be Himera herself. What an incredible encounter between legends that will be. Of course, she will have been slumbering for centuries when the maid finally arrives. It's funny how all the stories we grew up believing have been changing. Of course, I love all our old stories, but personally, I think the new ones are just as interesting. Yes, I know, I know. Unpopular opinion. The tablet appears to contain a hastily carved list of someone's favorite bugs. There's hardly any anecdotal lore or wisdom at all. 
You guess not all of these ancient tablets can be winners. Oh hey, there's a skull, you just gotta have it. Take turtle skull, hell yes. It's. <laughs> Taking all the skulls. Oh man, Jake's pestering you. You don't think you have it in you to answer after the last catastrophic encounter? Not yet, at least. Take a look at what he has to say anyway? Sure thing. Go got this terror, GT. Began pestering Gutsy Gumshu, GG. Ahoy! Jay? Yoohoo! No dice? Okie dokie. Then I just wanted to see what was up with you. I figure you must be starting up the game by now. Can't wait to get the scoop. I just had a, let's say, encounter with Dark's dumb robot and, well, it's over now. Let's just leave it at that. Headed into the ruins now to seal the deal with this rabbit malarkey, finally. Then I could join you. Not a moment too soon, probably. I think this volcano is about to blow? It's making me mighty nervous, I'm not going to lie. The ground's been shaken and everything. Whoop! There it goes again. Oh frick, this is a big one. Oh shit. Go got this terrorist. GT. Skull helmet. Computer ceased operating due to a severe blow to the head. Wow. Jake, wait. Oh no. Did, did the robot somehow come back to life and hit him or someone else did it? Well, Jake, I can't save you anyway, so... You're on your own. There is a skull-shaped indentation. Something probably needs to go in there. As for what? You think you'll need one of your fanciest detective mustaches to crack that mystery? Put a skull in there. Hell yes. Uh, oh. Uh, I can't really see that. Does it look like this one? The skull won't fit. No, stop. It's such an obvious mismatch. Don't even try, Jane. Put the skull down. Well, I guess that's the wrong one. How about this one? Oh, it worked. Oh, wait. It's leaving me. I wanted to see what those are. Wow. The lanterns have been hoisted. Three beams of light shine from the tower. The thing spits the skull, skull back out, okay? You grab it. No reason to squander a perfectly good puzzle skull. You think Jake would agree? I guess. Well, whatever we're supposed to do here is done. I guess you just gotta explore the other thing that came out of the hole. Which I assume is here? Yeah, this thing. It looks like the mirror at the top is designed to reflect light in different directions depending on the color of the beam. How mysterious. Is that all it does? That's all I came here for? It's gonna do something, right? Or is that like really it? Two obelisks bearing curious symbols and mirrors affixed at the top. Weird. Shouldn't these do something as well? Hmm, I don't know. It's very dark down there, you can't see your house. No telling how far it sank. Oh no, you just realized your dad might, must be down there. You hope he's okay. Well, you know, da dad can take care of himself. Hopefully, anyway. Because we gotta figure out what the hell's going on. I don't think there's anything else I can do here. Wait, no, there was a door here. Right? That I didn't open yet. So maybe that could do something. Some very old stone tablets along with carving apparatus, they say, We spent so long tending to our sacred seed pods. Each I cared for and released was like a precious bubble glub from my own mouth. They would seed our planet in anticipation of the maid's arrival. Alas, it turned out we had the prophecy all wrong. Our scholars discovered she would not arrive for millions of years. Our kind would not survive to welcome her. So our elders gave us a new purpose. We must all go to work building our own graves. Some say this is not as much fun as tending to seed pods and a life of simple agriculture. But I think it could be a blast. I'm just a balloon as half inflated kind of guy. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this door. Can I actually open it? There's no reason to do this, but it's like we jump up the blah blah Okay. No. What an engraving. When three visitors look inward, the way to the maid's palace would be clear. Am I supposed to open this, or is it just gonna be in the next page? I don't want to miss anything. But it makes me feel like I'm supposed to be doing something. The people here were highly skilled artisan artisans. What is that? Some sort of giant window? You can't imagine that has much significance. You give it no further consideration. 
Okay, there is more stuff. One by one, one by one, the nobles will arrive, and just as surely, one by one, their lights will be snuffed out. In the beginning, the light of our hope was lost. We must make do without it, and so must they. Then a mighty gust came and took the light of our life as well, and our people knew despair like never before. But the light soon renewed its flicker quite spontaneously, and has been shining strong since. All in the land rejoice. Our lights of heart and void will each follow in time, long after our extinction. One will be extinguished, and then another, leaving only life as the guiding light. But they should remain long enough to illuminate the maid's path and assist her with the housekeeping we have left behind. Sounds complicated. Tell those Sebastian to climb up. To light the light up, I guess? Okay, Sebastian didn't work on that. Rotate the lanterns. Oh, okay. Am I sp supposed to, like, somehow get all the four lights active or something? Mm, I don't think it works that way. There's always only three because one is extinguished. So I don't know. Ah, oh, bizarre. Okay, there's only ever gonna be three lights, but... When we looked at one of the holes, or the tower thing, I guess, it says, depending on the color, the direction changes, so... But what direction do I want to shine in, though? That's the thing I don't get. I don't know, I'm gonna have to experiment, I guess. Because I decay! Looks like mirror top is like, okay, the direction changed. Maybe I could somehow get it into one of the holes. Okay, I'm gonna try that again then. Okay, I got one light in the hole. A beam of light enters the pit. It's still too dark to see much. You don't want to risk tossing stuff down without knowing what's at the bottom. There must be a way down there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm that doesn't really quite tell me anything. What about the other one? This one goes into this hole. The pink light is illuminating an object at the bottom, but it's way too far down for you to jump. If only you had a nimble little helper to send down there and investigate. Well, freaking Seb is- ugh. Now I gotta take him back somehow? This is ridiculous. Call those Seb back down. I have to collect you back down. This is hella ridiculous. Okay, now I can get little Sebastian. Sebastian. Ooh, what's that? There's a house down here. Okay. Super weird. This land is kind of creepy, actually. Mausoleum. Am I gonna find Jaspers in here? Oh, it's like an elevator thing. Yep, definitely weird. Okay, let's get little Sebastian. Dear sweet, precious, sweet, sweet, loyal little Sebastian. Shit, you mean Lil. <laughs> I can't get him back? I want him back. I guess it doesn't work. Another skull. Fucking jackpot! Take Crocodile Skull. Hell yes. Elsewhere. Interesting. Did the door open though? Flip switch. Nice. E oh, not nice. Never mind. <laughs> Ew. Scarabs. Ugh. That's not out to so else there. Hmm. Oh, you put anything. Oh, this book would definitely be heavy as hell. That's a cake, right? I feel like the book would make more sense, right? Elsewhere. Hmm. But is that what I want? Ugh. Ugh. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, Sebastian follows. How smart of you. What does that mean, though? I don't understand at all. The other hole is probably too big, so I can't send, like, Sebastian down there. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the other area. I mean, I'm imagining... I, I imagine that... You're supposed to keep the thing open? So the bowls are out? I don't know. I don't know what any of this means.
Oh, I see. I actually do want the thing to be closed so that I can put the skulls in, right? Weird. Yep. Definitely weird. Oh, this thing's activated now. Ooh, I made a helium thing. That's cool, I guess. The seed pot has been released, leaving behind an empty husk. Will it reach Skya? You suppose you will never know. There are three skull-shaped indentations on the panel. You wonder what could go in the indentations. You are going to go out on a limb and guess Precious gemstones? Yes, that's it. But seriously, put a skull in one of the indentations? Yes, let's put that. I mean, I have three skulls and there's three things here, so wouldn't all of them fit? The sound better skull doesn't fit any of the slots. Really? You try to cram it into no avail. Will you cut that out? I said it doesn't fit. Well, how... Meddlesome. No, that's not the right word. How troublesome. Uh... Okay, so that means I would need one more? Oh boy, I need one more. Weird. Where would I get one more skull thing? Oh, it's over here. I didn't even see that. What the hell? You got an iguana skull. Super weird. Ooh, I got a boom book. You got a boom book. You do a little dance. Okay, there. Now we officially ended the flesh. Proceed to the next page. That was an adventure and a half. You verify whether or not you made it to the end of the game, <laughs> as shown above. If not, you proceed to consult the walkthrough for guidance. Thank God for walkthroughs, right? Okay, Jane, proceed. Oh, it's another one of these. Answer Dirk's autoresponder. What you want, Dirkbot. Tamaya says of ITT began pestering Gusty Gumshoe GG. Looks like you're getting the hang of these puzzles. Nice work. Thank you. That last goal was a doozy, to be honest, for real. Yeah, I guess. If you have a human brain, sure. Personally, I've already solved all conceivable skull puzzles for all possible skull states, which is a thing that's like no big deal for me. Har har. Hey, I thought you couldn't see me once I left the house. I can't. Not through the server's viewport. But I can still monitor your progress through little Sebastian. He and I are linked the hell up cyberwise. We are so tight. Tight like you wouldn't believe. Oh yeah? It's like he is the Incredible Hulk's pants? And I'm his monstrous package yearning to bust loose. Bleh! Why? Jane, it seems there is a way bigger than average probability that you do not want to discuss Bruce Banner's megalithic gamma schlong? That figure would be sitting pretty at 100%. Holy shit, some of my circuits exploded. That number was intense to Robo consider. Okay, let's stop talking about stupid things for a minute. What a completely absurd environment for our typical blithering in this course. I'm hot on the prowl for more clues about this strange and mysterious land. Haha, <laughs> what? I don't know, just how hot is that? Anyway, I think I'm getting closer to finding where my house went. Then I can reunite with Dad, and together we can sleuth this great big pickle of a planet. Well, the good news is your house should be just ahead if you keep following the trail. Yes, I knew it. The bad news is your dad's not there anymore. Oh no. I guess he got antsy and left to explore? Maybe he's looking for you? I tried to block him from leaving with some furniture, but the dude was having none of it. Golly, why did he have to leave? This really complicates matters. I hope he doesn't get lost. Don't worry, we'll find him. I'll have Seb search within a likely radius. The little guy is real fast. Yes, good idea. In the meantime, you better go find your house. We aren't making any progress in this game without it. It's kind of central to the gameplay, you know? If you need Seb to do anything from afar, just message me, and I'll give him the orders. Got it? Got it, thanks. Tamayas testify TT cease pestering Gutsy Gumshoe GG. What's this? Oh, it's hat. Something's clogging the hole. You got your dad's hat. Looks like he got sucked into one of the air holes. Luckily, he always keeps some spares in his wallet, but this means he came by this way earlier. And what are these weird looking things? 
Helium is rushing in out of these air holes. While you are inspecting them, you breathe some in and it makes your voice sound funny. Hee <laughs> hee. Whoa, there's a house on top of a little. What the hell is this? The switch has no power. I guess this is how I contact a Dirk respond auto responder. Hey, there's your house, but it's way too far to jump away this time. You jumped pretty far the first time. Message auto responder tell little sub to rotate the lanterns. Oh, he's still over there? Okay. Nothing changed. Oh. Bizarre. Flip switch. Well, that's one of the switches. A just stream of air blows out of the hole, pushing the balloon higher, but not high enough. Oh, try to push it back up there so that I could go back out. I see. Interesting. Gotta try something else. Maybe this one. That one should point at the other one, so this one might do something. Whoa, what the hell? Well, yeah, that is one solution. Or not. <laughs> My house is now wet. <laughs> the waterfall pushes your house down, connecting the seed pod with its hus. Oh man, everything in your house is probably getting soaked. Yeah, probably. But I mean, it's closer. Okay, there's gotta be another one. Maybe one that lights both up? That, that's not- I don't think that's helpful at all. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, I don't think any of these are gonna work. It's just gonna do the same thing, I feel like. Wait, it works this time because there's because of the water? Okay, weird. Your house has finally resurfaced. You retrace your steps back home. Sadly, your father will not be waiting for you there. Still, better to regroup before you go off looking for him. Indeed. Uh, why is there a troll over there? Super suspicious. Uh, that troll looks suspiciously like Gamzee, so I'm gonna assume that's his ancestor. And I don't know if it's trust them or not. It looks like Gamzee though, they even have like the same, like, scratch. A friendly clown- I don't know about friendly. A friendly clown welcomes you to Lokal. It seems he would like to be your guide. <laughs> Look, fuck no and fuck no. <laughs> will you let me your guide? Fuck no! Look, he freaky as hell, okay? Jane, cautiously approach. You cautiously approach your new guide. Wait, you said you didn't want him to be your guide? The friendly clown strongly advises you to reconsider. You do not reconsider. You ask him who he is, but he maintains his cryptic, serene expression in perfect silence. You give some thought to sidling away from the awkward encounter and go inside, when the clown finally speaks up. He wants to know if you would like to buy these motherfucking potions. Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you examine the clown's wares with due skepticism. He assures you that all of his wicked elixirs are motherfucking magic and all that. The clown sure likes to say motherfuck a lot. It is making you feel uneasy. Well, you know, Gamzee likes to say motherfuck. Okay, first of all, there are no labels on any of these potions, and they all cost the same, so what the hell? I'll go with this. Indigo potion, 420 boot dollars. He says this potion will make you strong. You guess it would be pretty handy to be strong. Except that it's probably bullshit and the potion doesn't do that at all. Oh, do I even have money? He looks uh, taken aback that you would refuse such a valuable commodity. He says no, you gotta buy this motherfucking shit. It's the hottest fucking noise since a big titty ninja. Okay, okay, whatever you say, clown. Here's your stupid boon dollars. He gives you like 50 of these days? Jesus Christ. What, are we still doing this here? Can I buy all these? Bronze potion. Okay, the clown says one sip of this potion will cause you to lose the use of your legs. 
However, you will become an excellent kisser. Is this a, some kind of weird allusion to Tavros? A trade that is more than motherfucking fair, he says. Personally, you think someone would have to be suicidal to drink that heinous brown liquid? Disgusting. He's gonna make me buy everything, I feel like. Absolutely not. The clown appears crestfallen, that counters with another offer. Buy one bottle, get one free. You scowl at him as if he is quite mad. He gets the picture. You're not interested. He then gives you a few bottles of the stuff and says he'll just put it on your tab. No worries. Literally, what the hell? <laughs> Fuchsia potion. This lovely looking potion is supposed to have powerful healing properties. A must have in the inventory of an up and coming maid of life. You don't want it. But the clown really thinks you should take at least one of these handy elixirs? He won't take no for an answer. You say fine and buy a few just to shut him up. Okay, I think I bought this one already. Olive potion. Okay, I think I'm buying blood. I really think I'm buying blood. <laughs> this gross looking pea soup elixir is touted as a powerful love potion. Just sneak a few drops into the beverage of your object of affection and he or she will fall head over heels for you. Literally, in the event that your sweetheart to be is decapitated, you're very wary of this claim of course, but you guess it couldn't hurt to have one bottle on hand. She's gonna use it on Jake. <laughs> Should I actually say buy it? Does it give me different options, like text options? You buy one olive potion. Ugh, this stuff looks nasty. You're gonna to have to sneak it into an especially strong drink if you don't want Jake to notice. Wait, did you say Jake? You mean of course hypothetically any person you give this to, strictly in the name of science. Uh, yeah, this conversation is over. So over. Violet potion. These are definitely troll bloods. This potion is to be imbibed by anyone who wants to exhibit unabated lust for all he or she encounters, as well as to behave like more of a douchebag. You wonder why anyone would want that? He gives you a sly wink and says nothing more. You say no thanks, but he asks you if you want to buy anyway. Why would I want that? You ask him if he's flip his friggin codpiece. Of course you don't want it. He says, ah, oh, but you must. He insists. He gives you 20 bottles for free. Then he says that will be whatever 420 times 20 boot dollars is. You let out a heavy sigh, say fine, and fork over the money. Dude, he's making me buy all his crap. Cobalt Potion. He claims this potion endows a streaker with incredible luck. Then he does a stupid looking jig on your fridge, clicking the heels of his dumb elf shoes. You find that a bit hard to swallow. Not just because it's implausible, but because that blue muck is straight up nasty. He doesn't get the joke. An emotion so swift you didn't even follow, he grabs your hand, pushes a potion of cobalt into your palm, and closes your fingers over it. As you begin to object, he puts his fingers over your lips and whispers, whispers shush, W420 motherfucking boonies, yo. Heesh pap smush me, shush me. Gold potion, this sickly mustard goo, is supposed to make your hacking skills go bananas? Like you would ever care about that? He says, not so fast though, for its benefits are twofold. It also makes a pretty killer substitute for grub sauce in a pinch. All of this crap is useless? <laughs> you tell this clown to go take a long walk off a short cliff. He pretends not to hear you and restates his offer. You're getting kind of fed up with this idiot, so you purchase yet more useless bottles of liquid? Are we done here, bro? Uh, I think we're done here, bro. The first question that pops into your head while examining this fellow, of course, is where do you get that outrageous outfit? You don't really have the gumption to ask. But if you had to take a wild guess, you're almost certain the answer would be hand wave away with the word shenanigans. See? Look, he is waving his hand preemptively as if reading your mind. Truly, this clown is wise. Can I leave here? <laughs> I guess I can't. I gotta leave this page. Weirdo. Oh my god, I really bought all those stupid potions. Okay, what the fuck are you gonna do with all these stupid potions? Talk about buyer's remorse. It is Gamzy, what the hell? You have had enough of this vulgar clown and his pushy potion peddling. You do not want him to be your guide and you politely ask him to leave your property. He sold me troll blood. What the hell? Gamzy, retrieve contraband from chest of whimsy. You freaking weirdo. The clown says he can all motherfucking abide about that. He doesn't want to get his steps onto any motherfucking toes. But he says if he's not going to be your guide, you gotta at least have someone as a guide to all guide you on your way through this quest of miracles. He tells you to hold your shit while he retrieves something from his chest of whimsies. You say, you mean the refrigerator? He acts like he didn't even hear you. Oh my 
god. Gamzee, what the hell? Is this what he's been doing this whole time? The year away? He- Oh, I, I just don't even know. This is so messed up. Look at this. Decapitated Tavros. And then the first gun, and there's something- there's someone else under them. I can't quite see. Well, you know, all the dead characters, basically. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, there's only two of them here. Torso flail. Get that crap away from here. Disgusting. Jay, say hello to your new guide. Uh, hold on, what? Oh, he threw it at her freaking Colonel Sprite. Okay, that's gonna be wild. Mm-hmm. Tevra Sprite. No, there's both of them are in there. Oh, no, oh my god. What the fuck happened? My person elderly is just absolutely fucking irreconcilable. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Honk. Damn it, Gansy. What the fuck have you done? This is a tra travesty. No. No, 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 no. You have to undo this somehow. Are you listening to me, clown? And whoever the fuck you are, make me stop being this thing. Um... Okay, I'm sorry for screaming there. That fellow over there just caught me off quite off guard with this, uh... Stunt? Urgh. You seem quite upset. I think we should all try to calm down and figure out what to do. Duh. Um, yes. Well, first of all, my name is Jane. Pleased to meet you. What is yours? My name? Fuck. My name, it's nothing. I am a stuttering repellent on holy abomination. Oh dear, you have no idea how fucking much I hate myself right now. Oh, uh, these people need to be more responsible with Colonel Sprites, yo. Honk, quiet you. This is all your fault. Look at what you've done. Shut up. I hate you both. I hate everything. I hate the way I falteringly speak out. My jumbled thoughts? I hate how I drag out the things I say sometimes. I don't even know which parts of myself are hating which things, so I just hate everything. Hey clown, can't you do something? This poor creature shouldn't exist. <laughs> oh, Tavra Sprite. I don't even know how this is. It's like. <laughs> They're gonna explode. Okay, they exploded. Tavra explode. Honk. Bye, Gamzee. Oh. What? This gotta be their ghost selves then, right? How are they here? Is this a dream bubble of some sort? Or is there like a sprite land that they all go to when they get prototype? That would be wild. Tavros, this fucking sucks. What? What do you mean, what? For starters, that completely horrible shared body resurrection bullshit that just happened? You were there, remember? That's kind of the point. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't so bad. I think maybe we were overreacting about being one person. Overreacting my ass. What a nightmare is still making my ghostly skin crawl just thinking about it. No, I think I've decided. You're being unreasonable. It was cool being alive again for a while as a strange unsettling mutant. Wait, hold up. Did you, did you sprite? killed yourself and you somehow ended up in this weird dream bubble land okay if we didn't explode ourselves ourselves so fast it could have been an adventure maybe oh sure that's easy for you to say you weren't the one getting the short end of the shared personality stick maybe if your persona personality was as much an upgrade to mine as mine was to yours i would have been cool with it too you might be right actually it was pretty neat what Getting to feel all the amazing self-esteem you get to feel. I didn't really know what it felt like. I mostly only knew what the pretend kind was like. So, thank you for letting me feel that, I guess. Hahaha, <laughs> you're welcome. Now that you mention it, maybe there was a silver lining to that freak show. Someone else finally got a chance to feel firsthand how great it is being me. <laughs> yeah, it must be pretty great overall. So, aside from being partially me briefly, how have you been? Okay. Dead, mostly. Yes, me too. Yeah, hey, sorry about that, by the way. About what? About killing you. It wasn't very cool of me. Oh, right. I almost forgot that even happened. How could you forget? Haven't you been pissed off at me about it? No, I mean, it was pretty much my fault. I think 
I attacked you with my bogus self-esteem and I paid the ultimate price. No, you idiot. That's not what happened at all. I stabbed you through the chest because I was being a huge bitch. I mean, it was a long time ago, but that's not really how I remember it. Ugh, stop being so stupid. That's so stupid. No, you're stupid. You are such a pain in the ass when you're dead. Let's just agree it was my fault and drop it. No, but okay. Man, being dead is such a drag. I don't know if I can deal with this shit anymore. I think it's alright. Oh, come on, it's so boring. What a completely pointless and hollow existence this is. And if the existential mal malaise wasn't bad enough, now I have to be constantly watching out for that fucking orange guy? Orange guy? The orange guy. Have you seen him? No. There's an orange guy, this guy? I guess he's pretty orange. Well, there's an orange guy. You mean the bird version of Dave? No, not Dave Sprite. It's just some random pointless orange guy who's been hassling me, hassling me for no reason. I can't catch a break. And if that wasn't enough of a nuisance, we've apparently got to deal with getting yanked out of the afterlife without a moment's notice by some bozo and a codpiece to participate in his grotesque body fusion pranks. Between you and me, I'm starting to think we are getting jerked around here, you know? Uh, some inexplicable forces out there are fucking with us. They are doing everything in their power to make sure that when we're not being totally humiliated, we are staying completely irrelevant. We can't let them toy with us. Then just sweep us under the carpet like that. I'm not going to let our relevance be marginalized anymore, Tavros. What are you going to do? I think it's time to start fucking some shit up. Oh no. More like, oh yes. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of being dead, and useless, and bored, and I'm not going to take it anymore. You're with me, right? No way, I like being dead. I like how there are no responsibilities or problems, usually. I can relate to that, Tavros. Tavros, that is the lamest thing I've ever heard you say, which is really saying something. Yes, it is. You've got to quit that loser attitude and get your ass out of the sand. That's just your low self-esteem talking again. Yes, I know. I'm going to have to insist. You're going to join me, and together we are going to fuck shit up. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes, I will definitely. She's totally mind controlling him. Cooperate, cooperate with you wholeheartedly. Damn it. Okay, fine. That's manipulation, Frisco. Jake, proceed to time capsule. So, good old Jake, who knocked you out? You cannot proceed to the time capsule because you are lying on the floor unconscious while descending deep into the ruins. A sudden earthquake jammed the elevator on its way down, causing you to take a nasty spill to the floor below. Okay, so you knocked yourself out. Luckily, you are wearing your trusty skull top, preventing a more serious concoction? I mean concussion. You nevertheless lost consciousness and attempt with all your might to regain it. Jake, regain consciousness. Is then that the mind control device? You fail to regain consciousness. Oh, maybe I'll see John or something. I don't know. Years in the past. I don't know. I, I just thought he was going to go into, you know, dream bubble land. But centuries in the future. Hold up. What? Go on years in the past, but centuries in the future? Okay. <laughs> Jake, respond. Respond to... I don't know who this is. Dirk, I guess? Tamias testified TTBM pestering Gogata's Terror GT. Happy 13th, bro. I have something for you. Whoa, Nelly, you are too kind, my friend. What is it? It's no big deal, since it's none I wasn't planning on giving you anyway. I just sort of happened to finish it today. I think I catch your drift. So my new tin can comrade finally gets a head on his shoulders, eh? It's the bonnie. What? What is this? Okay, this is the past, I guess. All the bots, well, most of the part, most of the parts of the bots have arrived. Yeah, assuming I can actually send it today without another untimely paradoxification. If not, then hey, you get a sick grill full of birthday slime instead. Oh hell no, hell no, man. Well, listen, if you're going to send anything to me, slime or otherwise, can you please at least not make the shit appear directly over my head this time? The last thing I need on my B-Day is another installment of, and I quote, Mambro Bukake Theater. You still don't actually know what that means, do you? Not really. It's your friggin' figure of speech, man. I gather it just meant getting slime, like in Ghostbusters or some such? Kind of. I told you to look it up. Yeah, yeah, I'm a busy fella, Dirk. Wikipedia is a lot of letters to type in a thing for a man of action on the go. 
I'm always doing adventures, remember? That is such bullshit. You sit in your little jungle globe watching movies all day. Well, yes, but okay, I have a lot of movies to bone up on. There are so many good ones I still haven't seen. You think literally every film you watch is a masterpiece. I've never felt so much vigorous shame through someone else's atrocious taste and awful garbage. Screw you, I have impeccable standards. It's just there's so much good stuff out there and I've really been on a roll with my picks lately. Do you even hear yourself, dude? Your picks are everything and lately is always. Yes, I hear myself just fine. I hear a discriminating gentleman's melodious voice and it strikes my ears as the voice of reason. Hehe. <laughs> Say here's one I'm pretty excited about. Have you heard about this Avatar Jam? It's coming out next year. You mean the blue furry shit? No man, it is not blue furry shit. Far from it. Get this. It is about this paralyzed fellow who is down on his luck and longs for adventure. And he finds it. But it is far away on an enchanted planet rich with coveted treasures. An adventure is not all that he finds, oh no, he also finds romance. A beautiful blue woman from the wild teaches him the ways of her savage culture and also the ways of alien love. Together they frolic in the forest whilst sharing primal intimacy through magic sexual escapades. <laughs> What's so funny wise guy? To borrow from one of the more benighted sectors of your Zagus, that was so gay. Excuse me, but I fail to see what could possibly be gay about some huge, elegant blue men and women having really spiritual intercourse with their tails or something. Well, yeah, obviously not literally. Jake, where I'm from, that word hasn't been used as a pejorative or even much at all in a really long fucking time. But you're from friggin' Texas, aren't you? Yes, but not exactly. Ugh, stop being such a cryptic troll all the time. Anyway, Avatar looks spectacular and I think my preemptive review was spot on. The bloody end! Okay, but what you just said about those furries was gay as hell. It's time to face the facts. You are just treating my great taste in flicks to your aloof hipstery disdain as usual. You don't know anything about that movie. Maybe you'll like it? Nah, I saw it already. That movie sucked the smelliest shit from the ugliest butt. Sorry man. Well now I know you're just trolling me. It won't be out for another year. Right, here, let me send you the rest of this robot already. You've spent too long alone on that island as it is. I kinda worry about you. A man can only spend so much time in the middle of the damp ocean with nothing but pop cultural detritus and his own thoughts to keep him company. Alrighty, I hope it won't be as difficult to finish building as the rest was to assemble. Nah, just screw the thing on, it's ready to go. Capital, scoot that nog in my way and you're ready then. Dude, nobody talks like that. Oh, well, convenient. Oh cool, it worked. Heh, <laughs> you nerd. He's got your slick Japanese spectacles and everything. Why is this a metal man before me or is that none other than Dirk Strider himself in my room? One thing at a time, bro. I haven't quite figured out a way to get myself there yet. It almost sounds like this is something you've given some thought. Okay, well, I don't know what you're implying there, but why don't you snap that sucker on the torso and fire it up? Affirmative. I continue to boggle vacantly at your technical shenanigans. Your knack for gadgetry seems to suppress even my grandma's. And she was like this big time gizmo legend. How do you even do this stuff? I guess from your perspective, I must seem hells up overpowered in a bunch of ways. Which I kinda am. Like with a ninja sword, I'm basically nuts, okay? If you say so, buddy, I can't believe it. Yeah, but when it comes to building stuff, you're probably overstating things. Like for example, if you told someone a hundred years ago you could build a computer, they'd probably be like, whoa shit, look at this fucking genius. Well, actually, first of all, they say, what's a computer? I only know what horses and diseases are and shit like that. But once you actually tell them what computers are, Jesus, dick, you're a wizard. But from your perspective, you know it's not a big deal to build a computer. You just go online and buy a case and a motherboard and some other shit and put it all together. It's not like you're smelting the goddamn silicon in your basement and making chips in your hermetically sealed dust-free garage. Yeah, but come on, it's not like you're from a century in the future. Well, no. Nor am I a quaint man of the past. Pardon me, but do I sound like some trolley car bellwether toiling in the heart of the mustache belt 
from the rough and tumble year of 1909, he said unironically. Give me some credit, man, and some to yourself as well. You're too modest about all this robotics noise. I don't know. I have a lot of time to work on stuff, I guess. There are a lot of irons. You know where they are? Here's a hint. It's a pretty hot place. The kitchen? Uh, sure, I keep some irons there too, but most of them are in the fire. Oh, of course. Fire is quite notoriously the hottest thing there is. A tip-top locale for a whole mess of irons. True that. I actually have so much to do and think about. One of my current projects hopefully will address that very issue. Gonna make an AI replica of my own mind. He can share some of the load. As well as make a decent intellectual sparring partner, ideally. Not that my conversations with you aren't uniquely rad, but you know what I mean. See, again, I think you are downplaying a pretty neat accomplishment if you ask me. Shrug, we'll see. Does that mean I'll have to deal with two dirks? One who is more machine than man? And another who is a computer program you made? Haha, <laughs> that's a super joke. But I'm, guess you won't, but I'm guessing you won't be hearing much from the program. It probably won't play a significant role in either of our lives. Oh, you're so wrong, dude. I have my doubts it'll be a successful project, but who knows. I wager a tidy sum the results of the endeavor will be sensational. I believe in you. You do? Sure, bro. I always have. You have helped me out a lot and have been a good friend for ages. Hmm. What? Well, I wasn't sure about doing this today, but if it's true that you, you do believe in me, then I guess, fuck it, why not? Why not what? I guess call it an extra birthday present, but instead of a present that's awesome, consider it more like a weird confession that may change the way you feel about me. Whoa, uh... Dirk, are you, uh, saying what I think? What? What do you think I'm saying here? Uh, never mind. Sorry for interrupting. Should I sit down for this? I don't know what to do. Wait, I already am sitting down. Maybe I should stand up? No, just chill out. Stand up, sit down, whatever. Here's the thing. You know all these painfully obvious hints I've been dropping that always seem to be flying over your head? Um, maybe? I think I need a tower or something. About me being from the future. Oh. Oh, yes, I think so. Well, those weren't jokes, it's true. What? Oh man, are you actually serious? Yes. So like... You are from a century in the future? No, more like four centuries. The year 2422. Or as we say contemporarily, 411 PC, <laughs> what? What was that supposed to be? Post-condescension, oh. Okay, so it's been about 400 something years since she started ruling. Wow. I must say, this is not the announcement I was expecting. So you are a time traveler from 2422, here to help me build robots or something? No, I can't time travel. I can only send things through time, occasionally. I actually live here in the future, alone in my apartment. I could send messages to you in the past though, like I'm doing now. How? Years ago, our alien friend sent me a special chat client. It's basically just Pesterchum, with some sort of alien technology embedded. Oh, actually that also explains how come they all know the alien terms already, because it's like basically their terms. It's specifically where to communicate with your time period, as hours go by for me. The time it sends messages to also increments by the same amount, so we communicate in lockstep, as if we both existed in the present. She said it was important for Roxy and I to begin communicating with you and Jane. This is how we all become friends. Wait, you and Roxy? Yes, she lives in the future too, though we live nowhere near each other. I asked her to refrain from telling either of you. I wanted to be the one to let you know, to wait for the right moment. Holy fucking macro, this is amazing. So, you really are trusting me about this? Just like that? No second thought? Well, yeah, sure man, why not? Wait, it's not a prank, is it? No. This would be a very shitty and boring prank. I promise it isn't. Then heck yes, I believe it to friggin' pieces. It's an awesome thing to be true. Ha. Ah. So what's the far-flung future like? Some sort of crazy robo-paradise? Not quite, but there are definitely robots. Oh man, what are your movies like in the future? I bet there are some real cinematic humdingers. Like holographic stuff? Or shit you plug directly into your brain pod, right? Wait. You do have brain pods, right? 
No, we don't have rain pots because those aren't a thing. You just made that up. And there are no movies in the future. There are no humans either. They all went extinct. Roxy and I are the only ones left as far as we know. Well shit. Dirk, this story got so much less awesome. Is it too late to backpedal I'm believing it before I start to cry? No dude, it's too late. Tears ahoy, this motherfucker gets sad. Do you want to know what happened? Sure do. Let me just finish putting this steel melon on my brobot, and then I'm all ears. Jake, complete brobot. A uh, robot completed, and then it swiftly vanished. There, he is finished. Look at this spanking iron friend from the future. He is perfect. Oh shoot, Dirk, he just got blurry and disappeared. What the actual fuck? Don't worry, that's normal. Upon activation, he goes into stalking mode. Wow, always great to hear that a robot has a stalking mode. Stalking mode? Yes, he will stalk you in the jungle and strike when your guard is down. Worst present ever, if you ask me. Well, that's crazy. Why would I want that? Didn't you want someone to get in scrums with? Well, yeah, but man. He will give you all the scrums you can handle. Trust me, this will sharpen your combat skills. I guess you're right. I was just picturing a little good, honest, rough housing. Why does the whole thing have to sound so sketchy and nerve-wracking? Do you want to hear my grim tales of the apocalypse or not? Yes! You're right, let's put issues of fisticuffs aside for now. Tell me everything about the future. So how does humanity fuck up? Is it the nuclear holocaust? Or is it robots? Could be the robots, right? As per the Terminator. No, it's more of a gradual decline in population than that. Due to an insidious power grab by an aquatic alien empress. Oh, the old alien overlord story? Got it. When does she show up? She's already here. Your, or she's already there. In your time period, hiding in plain sight. She has been for anywhere between 50 and 100 years. She's the Baroness of Crocker Corp, Jane's company. But of course, Jane has no idea. The Baroness has been using subtle strategies to manipulate the human population through her company for a long time. On no November 11, 2011, she finally made her presence known to the world, along with her agenda for global domination. Jeez, that is pretty scary. So in a few years, she will be in charge of everything? No, not quite. That's just when the world finally sees her for the threat she is. She will continue to gain power by exploiting various institutions and the media from within. It would take the next several decades for her to claim the throne as Earth's absolute ruler. Her march to domination was facilitated by a number of scumbag sympathizers and opposed by a few brave rebels, including my ancestor. Roxy's too. I think your ancestor qualifies as one too. In fact, I'm sure she must have been the first member of the covert opposition movement. My grandma? I do remember when I was very young, she would tell me stories of the wicked woman who raised her. Was she the evil alien? Yep. That's a whole story right there, most of which is shrouded in rumor and urban legend. But before we get sidetracked by any of that, I'll try to cover the big picture, to give you a sense of all the batshit lunacy that followed the sea hag's power play. Oh, we get some backstory about how she ruled the freaking, you know, Earth. Nobody at the time knew what the fuck she wanted to accomplish or what her actual motives were. But in retrospect, it became clear she was trying to essentially restore the conditions of her old home world, which she used to rule over as well. She began instituting these crazy laws. First of all, people weren't allowed to reproduce. She found our usual method of procreation revolting, and anyone who engaged in it was punished by death. But she still needed an ongoing population of subjects to abuse. So to propagate the race, she set up this weird system. At random intervals, every citizen would be required to supply their genetic material to drones. That DNA would be collected and combined in some way. Okay, so like, you know, basically breeding the trailway. Many years later, long after the original donors had died, clones would be spawned from their DNA. So no one would ever be able to know who their parents were or be able to trace their lineage. It was only through a bit of good fortune that Roxy and I were able to discover who our ancestors were. They were the rebels you mentioned? Are they alive right now? I mean, in my time? Yes. Oh, I am very curious about them and also my grandma. I'll get to them, don't worry. Anyway, her imperious condescension turned out to be especially cruel to our human subjects. I'm sure her rule was no picnic on her home planet, but I think she resented humans' biological incompatibility with the ideal empire she envisioned and became frustrated. Humanity wasn't even really her first choice for rule. There are reports that she attempted to clone members of her own species and replace the, and replace the human population with them. 
but they all die. What happened to them? The rumors say it was her own pet who killed them. See, she traveled from her world to Earth in this huge red space arc. In it, she had gathered thousands of creatures from her planet, I'm guessing to save them from extinction. This more than anything has led me to speculate that some cataclysm happened on her home planet and she moved on to greener pastures to rebuild her empire. She bred all these creatures in secret, increasing their numbers, preparing for her eventual takeover. Each monster or Lucis naturae was meant to be kind of a caretaker of the young. You can see where the dramatic schisms between our species and hers begins, and also why she had a reputation for being quite insane. Well, she also happens to have this one humongous sea monster, Lucis, that is like her own personal bodyguard and kind of a secret weapon. But it turns out the thing is kind of an enigma, sort of a double-edged eldritch horror, as much in her service as it is calling the shots in some unfathomable way. Every time she tried to resurrect her race, it would slaughter them all psychically, as if it was keeping her ambition in check. Or so the story goes. Wait, these beasts tend to the young? I can tell you from first-hand experience that monsters are totally rotten at taking care of kids. They do a bang-up job of making them scared, though. Exactly, the plant was beyond shitty. So does that mean you and Rox were raised by these things? Nope. It was a very short-lived experiment centuries ago. Humans just don't have the same evolutionary symbiosis with those things that her race had. It turns out a bunch of fucking alien monsters have no interest whatsoever in taking care of human babies. They mostly just wound up eating them, or at best, just abandoning them. Later, she instated a Lucy droid system to serve the same function, as she began phasing in more robotic solutions in favor of all this ill-conceived biotech nonsense that always did nothing but backfire. What the hell is that? Even drones were replaced with robotic versions. I imagine they were just easier to produce and control since she'd given up hope of perfectly mirroring her own civilization in all its convoluted symbiotic glory. But not without a good fight and not without taking her frustrations out on the human population. She attempted to enforce blood casting through efforts to genetically alter people's blood color. That was an ugly chapter. A lot of fucking people died from that debacle. Over the last 400 years, the population just got smaller and smaller from these atrocities piling up. But she clearly didn't give a shit. All the while, the amount of dry land kept shrinking due to the gradual flooding. Soon there was hardly anywhere left to live. And then, that was that. No more people. Damn. Wait, flooding? Oh, yeah, I probably should have mentioned this up front. One of the first things she did while in power was begin melting the ice caps. What the hell? It took a while, but eventually the whole world flooded. That's how it is now. It's totally soaked up in this bitch. Wow, like the epic Kevin Costner film? Almost exactly, especially by the same degree of shittiness. Oh man, does that mean you have to drink your own pee? You get used to the taste. Welcome at even- I can't believe this whole pee drinking thing came back full circle. That takes about 15 days in a row of hard piss drinking though. Ew, no dude. No, ew. Relax, I don't drink my any goddamn piss, okay? Oh, okay, whew. I guess your loosest joy thingy sees to that that you have fresh water? Nope, those stopped being a thing a long time ago too, once humans went extinct. Oh, I thought... Hmm, well who raised you then? Nobody, man. I raised my damn self, okay? That's wild. Jesus, Christopher, Kringle fucker, and here I thought I was rugged. You're still pretty rugged. You're just a fucking dork about it. That's true. I guess I did have Cal looking after me. Let's not discount the rat service of the Seaman, okay? I'd rather we not mention the Seaman. Heaven forbid. And what about Roxy? Pretty sure the Carapaceans took care of her when she was young. Wait, the what's it? Right, another thing I forgot to mention. There are a lot of these humanoid creatures with hard shells. Some black, some white. They're chess pieces, actually. As humanity was dwindling due to an increasingly whimsical and psychopathic contents, she began introducing more of these Carapaceans onto the scene. Are they aliens too? Uh, sort of? They're definitely from other planets, so yeah. Really, the deal with where they came from is a whole other story for another time. But the bottom line is, at some point, somehow, she started herding a bunch of them from their home worlds onto Earth and multiplying them. Something like a hundred years ago, it became clear she favored these guys, 
more than humans as her subjects. They are very loyal and seem genuinely de dedicated to serving her. Must be what they were bred for. She still treats them like shit though, unsurprisingly. All these colonies started sprouting up. Like these modular cities floating underwater? It probably sounds cooler than it is, but they're basically slums. That's where they tend to live in large numbers. Roxy lives in one of these colonies. It's about 2,000 miles from where I am. Oh, are these those colonies? It's like very boring blocks. Good gravy! The, those are exotic circumstances, and here I was thinking I had the most exciting and adventurous life. It turns out I'm just some chump on boring ass monster island in the silly old pre-apocalypse. For what it's worth, I think it's gotta be more interesting living in the 21st century than the 25th. Like it's really no contest. You're probably right. I'd be really keen on talking to Roxy about this too. I'm very curious about her experiences as a future lady with all the what's its. The hard shell folk. I must say, it turns my previous perception of your lives right on its friggin' air. Man, she would love to talk to you about all this. She hates keeping secrets. It's been killing her not to spill all these fucking beans way the hell prematurely. Like, what is even your day-to-day -day business? Like, in C, Hitler's water apocalypse? Well, I mostly shit around in my apartment all day, building stuff, reading about history, and flipping out with my sword. Sometimes I go fishing and check out the underwater ruins. She does plenty of useless fucking around too, but at least she's got a neighborhood. She also uses one of her gadgets to gank vegetables and stuff from the past. She tries to feed the hungry neighbors whatever she can scrounge up. Oh, that's awfully nice of her. And she scrounged up- oh, she's the one that's been stealing all the pumpkins. Those are amazing stories. I am so lucky to have friends like you. Oh snap, what about Jane? Have you told her? Jane is- no, I haven't. I've dropped some hints and tested her willingness to believe something like this. It's just not going to fly. It's way too much drop on somebody all at once if they aren't receptive. Hmm, true, but it seems a shame to keep her out of the loop. Well, tell her whatever you want. She'll likely think she's being fucked with. Personally, I wouldn't bother trying too hard to convince her. There's no point in alienating her. Someday, she'll be ready to believe things. Okay, wow, I still have so many questions. It's incredible that this is all going to happen right around the corner. I don't know if I'm ready. Like I said, the changes will be a little more gradual than that. More clandestine. She'll exploit the fear caused by her revelation to the world to create intended reactions within governments and media, and her agents embedded on the inside will help nudge things in the direction she wants. Then, 20 some years down the road, without anyone suspecting a thing, she'll suddenly be in complete control and Earth will be fucked. I want to join the opposition. Fuck this witch, I have lots of guns and reckless bravado and I want to stop her. I'll pick up where my grandma left off. Well, aside from the main reasons that won't happen, which I won't get into, it still wouldn't be a good idea. Horseshit, why not? Cause people are way better at this than you tried and died? You said you wanted to hear about our ancestors. Heck yes, bro. Well, how much do you actually know about your grandma? What have you read, and what do you remember? My memory of her is pretty foggy. I do know she loved adventure like just like me. That's why she was exploring this island and raising me here when she died. She was a fair markswoman and knew her way around an atom or two. Pretty sure her company made a tidy fortune till it went belly up. At least I still have a few of her knickknacks for keepsakes. And as you confirmed, she was raised by that evil spinster. But then again, from some of the things my pen pal has said, kind of throws some of these details into question, so I don't know what to think. I don't know what the deal is with your pen pal either, and I'm not really prepared to speculate on that right now, but I'm privy to a shitload of historical data I can share. What's the last thing you remember about her? It was the night I found her dead. How? Who shot her? Well, I don't know if someone shot her, but who killed her? She had gone off to study the ruins one day. I'm pretty sure that was her purpose on this island, to study the technology here and solve all of the astonishing mysteries. She even built that big fancy house we used to live in, so I guess she really wanted to settle here for a while. But she didn't come home from her expedition for a couple days, so I started to get worried. I followed the trail we usually take to the lagoon while keeping my eyes peeled for monsters, but instead I found her lying there dead. I think a monster caught her off guard. There were three big fang marks in the body and a trail of blood along the path. It looked like she was trying to get home, but couldn't make it before succumbing to the injury. But before I could even do anything about it, I heard an explosion. 
I looked back at the hill, and my house was gone. Oh, that's quite an adventure then. Just a big poof of smoke where it was standing. So I lived alone in the jungle ever since. Huh, I wonder about all that. Well, you never ask. Oh, I know. I would have. But asking about your past would have just been inviting you to do the same. You know how it goes. Indeed. But for the record, I don't think those were fang marks on the body, dude. No? Finish the story first. Then what? What were they then if they're not fang marks? Oh, there's not much more to it. I had to deal with grandma's body. Awkward. <laughs> I would have loved to give her a proper and dignified memorial like Jane's granddad got. God, Jane is so lucky every day in her household must be like a weekend at Bernie's. What a riot it must be. I'm so jealous. Yeah, what a fucking treat. A living room corpse party every goddamn day. I know, right? Alas, I had to dispose of the body with haste so the monsters wouldn't eat her. So I just made a little campfire and burned it. I keep the ashes deep in the ruins, which is where I think she liked the best. Hopefully there isn't an earthquake or something that would knock the urn over in a predictable and hilarious fashion. Yeah, let's not let's not talk about that. <laughs> no way, man. I bet my bottom boom buck that shit's eternally safe. That urn's like the Fort Knox of standing upright forever because of no accidents. You guys jinxed it so bad, that's why I got knocked, knocked over. Uh, yeah. So then after camping out the next day, I went exploring and found my room globe mostly intact sitting in the jungle, so that's where I live since. And that's pretty much it. I sure wish my grandma though, or I sure miss my grandma though, she was the best. She was definitely very brave, if the stories are true. Downright audacious, I say. What did you hear? What the hell, is she controlling someone? Well, like I said, she was raised by the Baroness. It was probably a worse childhood than either of us had. She wasn't related, obviously. Ain't nobody's related to a damn fish alien. Except other fish aliens, probably. She had an adoptive brother, too. Life must have been miserable for both of them. Yes, I vaguely remember her mentioning him. Cripes, the thing she told me now that I think about it. She said the witch even killed her dog. Is that true? I don't know, but wouldn't doubt it. There are other urban legends that she did a lot of experiments on animals and people, mostly to do with mind control, like figuring out ways to unlock all of her psychic alien potential to increase her power. Not sure if that's true, or if it was actually successful though. So what you're saying is, pretty much any unspeakably horrible thing she could have done, she probably did. Yes. Anyway, your grandma managed to run away when she was quite young. Maybe it was a traumatic event like dog murder that prompted her to flee. Who knows? Whatever the case, her bro stayed behind. The guy must have been seriously immune to witnessing fucked up shit, because he went on to be a famous comedian. A real, a real kindly old cornball. A nicer guy you couldn't hope to meet, they say. Ah, <laughs> wow. Must have been a hell of a guy. So, you're not making any connections there. Where? Huh? Famous comedian? About the age of your grandma? Inheriting the family name of the Baroness? Not ringing a bell? What are you talking about, Dirk? Stop speaking in riddles and keep telling the story I am on tender hooks here. Or tender hooks here. Okay, wait. It's not like it's that important. Just a super obvious thing that will probably occur to you later when you're looking in the fridge you don't have. At which point you'll feel like an idiot. Oh my god, you can be one opaque motherfucker. Just clue me in, bro. Nah, it'll be funnier this way. Strider! Moving on. Uh, dick. I mean, Dirk. <laughs> Dirk is a dick. The kid kept the family name, but obviously your grandma didn't. She must have held a grudge against the Baroness her whole life. She started by taking a different name she knew was stick in her crawl. Oh, I remember this. I believe she said the witch used to be married to a terrible man named English. Oh, right. She must have been married to Lord English. So because the witch really hated that guy she took on his name as sort of a big ol' fuck you to the woman? That's probably close to the truth. But it sounds like the kind of story an old lady tells her young grandson in a way he would understand. Or at least wouldn't scare the shit out of him. What I've read is something much more sinister as usual. There's supposedly only one thing the Baroness fears and your grandma learned of this somehow. It wasn't an ex-husband though, it was her superior, some kind of a demon, or another alien, no one really knows, but he went by the name English, 
He's supposedly even more brutal than she is, if you can believe that. So I'm named after a demon? What kind of demon is named English anyway? What kind of alien is named Crocker? It's probably just a name he stole from someone else, like the Baroness did. I guess it's kind of cool being named ever a demon who's so scary even if even the witch is afraid of him. Yeah, well, your grandma does so. Everything she did in life thereafter seemed to be an effort to piss off the better witch. Like starting a competing tech company, heavily branded in a way that was presumably intended to remind the Baroness of her boss. Like with skulls and garish colors and shit. The dude is some kind of skull monster, I guess. I love skulls. I know. What the hell? Hob- Hob- Hopi Woodoo? Well, somebody messed up the Hollywood sign again. It was definitely brave on her part, but ultimately it got her a bankrupt company, a blown up house, and a fork through the torso for her trouble. A fork? Well, I guess that makes sense. That is her weapon. But she must have been the first to understand how dangerous the Baroness was while acting in covert opposition. Others will follow and continue to as of now, in your time period. These are your ancestors? Yeah, mine and Roxy's were among them. Anyone I've heard of? Of course. All oh, these fuckers are totally famous, obviously. Oh, sure, obviously. We've talked about the guy I'm genetically derived from a lot, actually. Like, you know, every time I've ever talked about my bro. Get Zooks, of course. With all your future mindfuckery, you made me completely forget about your wanted Hollywood sibling. I should've asked where you fit into the picture if you weren't raised alone. I can be dumb as a bag of penny candy sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, other times, you're on point. Like a bag of the nickel shit. Whoa, now, those are the sweets kept in reserve for millionaires. Such flattery. Okay, what we're saying? Stop meaning anything. So, I'll continue. Right, so then he was never actually your bro? No, that's just kind of how I view him. Lalan took a more maternal view of her ancestor. The lady who wrote all the dreary wizard books, I presume? Yeah, the C-O-T-L or the cult I I don't know how to say that. Series. Ever read it? What? Who's this? With these weird chains. Although, don't you think these looks kind of like Hussie's legs? No, I tried. It's too depressing. And also, uh, kind of impossible to understand. I told Roxy I liked it though. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so don't say I said that. I think I'll wait for the movies to come out. I bet I'll like those better. You don't say. I do say. Hey, you must have seen them. What being in the future. Are they any good? They are not. Fooby to that. Like I even believe you. The books are pretty interesting though, if somewhat dense. They're supposedly heavily allegorical, veiled representations of cosmic events surrounding the witch and her boss and how all this came about. It's the kind of thing you wouldn't pick up on unless you were someone who understood what happened, like the condens, which was kind of the point. I think it was her way of letting the witch know, I'm on to you. In the early days of the resistant movement, they both opposed her more indirectly through their art, like critics of tyrannical governments often used to. They had to be careful, didn't want to make big waves too early. My bro did this too, with his many fine films. Practically everything was a symbol for something. Either in mockery of the Batter Witch, or conveying some hidden message to its audience, each film was all always rigorously picked apart for its head-scratching symbolic meaning, but he managed to accomplish all that without ever compromising the purity of his ironic vision, which I think was admirable. Is this one of those films? A bit awkward. Fuck yes, the SBAHJ films rule. Screw the haters, that's what I say. You also say that about Weekend at Bernie's. Man, that is a scandalous mischaracterization. Nobody hates Weekend at Bernie's. The web films are generally regarded as so unremarkably mediocre, they don't even attract any trolls who care enough to shit on it. Believe me, I've tried to get in debates with people about it. Yeah, you pretty much touche the fuck out of that. But we are definitely in agreement about my bro's films as the master strokes they were. He just kept cranking them out too. He really stopped the production after 11 11 11, even though the cat was finally out of the bag. He was very dedicated to his graph, craft. Dang, I can hardly wait to see them. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath about that. Why not? Man, fuck it. I'll just send you them. Just keep a lid on them. We don't need any weird causal causality shit rearing its head here. That would be dumb. I will guard each glistening compression artifact with my life as if a jewel pilfered from a tomb. Which was the last you saw? Well, there was a S. Bodge the 
Mavolvi and I spodged the the film. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, and I spodged the the what? The Mauve? Why are there so many variations of a movie? I think I spodged the Moiv is still in production, right? But honestly, I get confused about which particular misspelling is attributed to which film, or even if I'm getting the misspellings right. The key to sorting it all out is to understand it doesn't actually matter. Through video streaming services, he would frequently set it up so that buying a certain title would ship me the wrong film. And often, titles for movies were available for sale that just straight up didn't exist, or would be sold for dollar amounts that made no sense, like two. 890 what the hell is that 2.890.1 that's not that's not a dollar amount okay and sometimes buying a download would actually deposit money into your account instead of deducting from it wow i want that one it was all part of the experience yeah maybe the experience of being trolled your forebears are certainly entrepreneurial if nothing else I can get behind the idea of making a killing if it means I also get to be as good at, at doing adventures as I hope to be. Did they ever bring the battle to the witch's doorstep? Or were their blows dealt strictly through public masquerades and theatrics? Yeah, they got pretty deep into the shit eventually. They were both very skilled combatants. I'm pretty sure she had some weird powers too. Powers, you say? Communion with occult forces, something like that. She knew things, had visions. It's why she was able to write those books. And more importantly, why Roxy and I were able to survive here. How? They knew we would be here someday, so they prepared for our arrival. I lived in what used to be my bro's old apartment 400 years ago. The whole city is gone, but this one unit was somehow protected. He left some supplies for me here, like a lifetime supply of orange soda in the crawl space, along with a fuck ton of espage merch. It was like discovering my own personal holocaust of bulbous jetting bottoms. Plus some weapons, some other gear, and a killer pair of shades. Roxy's mom used to live in her place too, and left some stuff she might need lying around. This was way before there were care patient colonies though. I think her house must have been a kind of carnalized structure, like a potential colony. Something built to undergo modular self-replication if activated. I'm sure her mom knew that. It's been a good way for Rox to blend in. I stick out like a sore dumb here, of course, but it hasn't been but it hasn't really been a problem yet. So, they knew you would show up in the future someday and prepared for that. Doesn't that mean they also knew they weren't going to be able to stop the witch? Probably, but they went down fighting anyway. Wow, that's brave and kind of sad. Yeah, but wouldn't you? Of course, you always go down guns blazing. That's what a hero does when he loves adventure and has guns. If there's one thing movies have taught me besides the fact that guys using a corpse as a silly puppet is freaking hilarious, it is that fact. It's not like their rebellion was totally futile. They took a lot of shitheads down with them. Who? Sympathizers. Ugh, just the thought of such scoundrels turns my stomach. They should. In order for you to understand, I have to fill you in on the ridiculous final gaps of human civilization, taking place over the several decades leading up to its absolute enslavement. The decades which immediately followed the rebranding. Is this guy Ferrari? <laughs> what the hell? As I mentioned, Crocker Corp's rebranding on 311, as it was often referred to in the news, totally changed everything. It marked the beginning of a completely shameless downward spiral of Western civilization through a series of events that were probably hard to notice at the time, but quite glaring when evaluated historically. Didn't the rebranding happen pretty early in the act when we were first introduced to Jane? Could all our stuff change? Though the Baroness made very few substantive gestures of aggression, the global fear of her looming threat would trigger all the changes she needed. Governments prepared for war, as if to defend against the invading alien armies she undoubtedly commanded. But of course, she had no army. She was always the only of her kind. Instead, the world powers were only setting about to build her armies for her. The media, the media deteriorated into this preposterous circus that was in all practical ways inseparable from the power base and government institutions. Popular entertainers became dangerous demagos, and their roles in the media blurred with those of executive authority, and the most dangerous were the ones who fed into the fear and hysteria most effectively. Those tended to be plants, unscrupulous shills paid by the Baroness to move her agenda forward. Dang, I would like to think I would not be suckered by their silvery tongues whenever they come along? 
Well, the thing is, most of them are already on the scene in your time. Oh, they're already doing that, you know, silvery stuff. Who? Ever hear of Guy Ferrari? No, I don't think so. You're fortunate then. He was an especially degenerate piece of filth. He used his connections and guile to wriggle into the spotlight and then onto other positions of power. He somehow landed on the US Supreme Court. Over the years, other justices started mysteriously disappearing without being replaced. After helping rewrite the constitution to form an incomprehensible patchwork of fascism, theocratic mandates, recipes, and bad rap lyrics, he weaseled his way up the ranks to become the high chaplain of interstellar war. I'm just gonna cut to the chase, cause really this ain't a big history lesson here. He eventually came to be regarded as the third and final antichrist. No other human in history was responsible for more death and suffering. Wow. Oh my god, it's the clouds again. Deb Borish Kerr. Yes, that's exactly the phrase I would use to describe someone responsible for the extermination of 5 billion people. It was just so uncivilized of him. How could such an atrocity be allowed to happen? Was his personal magnetism really that overwhelming? Maybe overwhelming in the wrong direction, yeah, but it didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual decline in the integrity of the system that allowed it. Eventually, the wheels came off and the political scene mirrored the absurdity of the media circus. By the time Presidents Jay and Dope were elected, Western civilization had officially fucked itself over forever, and I think everyone knew it. Oh no, when has that happened? 2024, the last free election the world would ever see. So like, they were on the ticket together? As president and vice president? No man, they were both president. They were the first dual presidents of the United States of America. Also the last. They were also the first and last Juggalo presidents. The Founding Fathers warned us about this, but nobody listened. They did? Warned us about what exactly? The mirthful executives, it's about them, them clowns. <laughs> George Washington had prophetic nightmares about them. He tried to warn people and get language amended to the Constitution to prevent it. Like forbidding the election of what he famously described as a pair of salty bards or unruly jesters given to the sweet drink. But everyone just thought he talked too hard on the colonial cannabis or whatever. I'm not sure I followed. These are like clown presidents or such? Yes, they were a shitty rap duo from your time, but they ran a hell of a campaign. By then, the Juggalo party had gotten huge. While the numerous other candidates split the moderate vote, they retained a very energized and devoted base. You could say their party had a big tent. Dirk, I really dislike the future you are describing. Hey, me too. They were swept into office on a wave of fago, and the presidential inauguration was the biggest gathering of the juggalos of all time. They all hose each other down on the White House lawn with shitty soda, okay? The DC and the Capitol thereafter officially stood for Dark Carnival. Of course, their campaign was helped considerably by having support from the Baroness. In retrospect, people developed the impression that it was all a part of her sick sense of humor. There was this sense that she just loved the idea of delegating the extreme subjugation of the world's population to a pair of demented clown rappers. Some have speculated this was just another way she was attempting to resurrect her previous model of governance, though this seems kind of far-fetched to me. Who the fuck ever heard of an alien juggalo? Uh, well clearly you have not met Gams yet. <laughs> to me, this is about as stupid as the crackpot theories get. What the hell? Is this supposed to be, um, Dave Strider, because he's the bro in this world? I still don't really know what a juggle is. Do they juggle? D don't worry about it. People were less prepared for a double juggalo presidency than they ever imagined. I'm not even going to get into all the horrifying details. Trust me, you just start to feel dirty reading about it. From the moment Ferrari held up the Bible to swear them in, and the three of them proceeded to publicly defecate on it while freestyling rap lyrics, that was it. Everyone in the world watching it on TV just said, whoop, show's over. Civilization was pretty cool while it lasted. The next several grueling terms of the Red Presidency was a weird combination of authoritarian practices. The Baroness used it as a puppet regime while still basically giving them carte blanche to carry out their idiotic whims. Vega was pumped through the plumbing instead of tap water, okay? Gross. The new national pastime was having type 2 diabetes, okay? And the national anthem was replaced by a three minute high reverb audio clip of President Jay farting into a microphone while laughing. Chaplain Ferrari was authorized to set up the death camps 
in which anyone on the planet could be imprisoned if they were not deemed sufficiently immersive. And so the cleansing began, priming humanity for its new ruler waiting in the wings. This was when our ancestors had enough. This is when they had enough? I've been having enough since all those weird stuff I just read. The resistant movement had failed, but they could at least bring the war criminals to justice. My bro finally caught up with the presidents and challenged them to a duel. They accepted, having for years regarded him as a cocky rival rapper who failed to show them the proper respect. In their arrogance, they invited him into the foul belly of the carnival, believing they could teach him once and for all what it truly meant to be down with the clown. For centuries thereafter, survivors of the Hillerocos would cite the rooftop showdown as one of the most heroic moments in hum human history. Whoa, pretty epic. He sliced them all in half. He killed them both. What is this? Looks like a weird picture of like someone running. Alright, nice going, bro. Unfortunately, as they were only figureheads, no liberation followed. There would be no parades in the streets, or statues cast, or medals awarded. The few witnesses would report seeing only a man with a sword on a shitty skateboard gently rising into the night sky. No one ever saw him again. So it could mean that he's still alive, right? <laughs> I don't know. Meanwhile, Roxy's mom was tracking down the huge chaplain. His crimes had already been committed. She couldn't repay them by any stretch of the imagination, but she could wipe the blood stained grin off that fat bastard's face. It's her, uh, what you might call it, knitting kit. She gouged his eyes with a pair of needles. Okay, what the hell happened to the freaking planet? It's like a freaking wasteland. And rode his torso to the bottom of the Blade Falls. Ooh, that's a parallel to that other thing. He was an ogre. Reports of what happened to our ancestors after that are sketchy. There were no eyewitness accounts I've found, but some believe they regrouped and confronted the contents herself with all her high-ranking officers dead and the human population decimated and sufficiently groomed for her arrival, there was no reason to stay behind the scenes anymore. After those dreadful years of putting up with a more vulgar brand of authoritarianism, when she finally stepped forward to claim her throne, it actually came off as somewhat dignified, elegant in a way. She was no less severe, but at least she knew how to act like an empress. Yeah, like dumb fools, right? Uh... Who is this? Is this God Cat? Looks like G Cat. But even if they did manage to her, confront her, there was no way they could win. She had too many crazy alien powers. Her boss supposedly had jacked her power level through the roof. I even heard, and don't quote me on this, that she may have been over 9,000. Is that a Dragon Ball Z joke? I think it is. Heavens to Betsy, that figure is just absurd. Yeah, and that's not even to speak of the generic smorgas board of other powers she was rumored to have. It gets hard to separate the fact from the urban myth. But for reference, if you want to believe it all, just picture all the X-Men combined into one sexy fish woman in a skin-tight suit. Well, mama. No, did she actually kill them? Ma! My kids, who are not kids, but you know. Whatever actually went down, they're surely both dead now. I guess it ha had to happen like that though. There's no way the Condes would allow us to be born within even a century of our genetic forebears. The thought of that was completely disgusting to her, but I really would have liked to be able to meet them. I guess some things would just be too awesome to ever stand a chance of happening. Yeah, I know the feeling. Wait, what? Dirt, did you tell me at some point that you did find evidence the witch killed them? As of now? No. Are you sure? I swear I remember you saying something about that. How could I have said something like that before today? This was obviously the first time I mentioned any of this. Oh, I'm just having the nuttiest deja vu thing going on now. I feel weird. I guess I am mistaken. Never mind. And maybe because this is a bubble? Okay, I would disregard your anomalous observation for now and continue conversing as if it never happened. Right, good plan. Um, uh, anywho, that's a heck of a tragic and thrilling tale, Dirk. I am still totally cock-eyed and catawampus about it all. I don't even know what to think. Well, you believe me, right? Oh yeah, every word of it. Wow. Why shouldn't I? You are my friend and I trust you. I still just think it's impressive as all. Uh, even after all this time? You're pretty much a one-of-a-kind dude. Heh, <laughs> not really. I just like believing stuff and believing in people. Wait, what do you mean? About what? What you said after all this time? 
You just told me now. Yes? Hang on. Blar! The deja vu shit is happening again. Okay, I am sure we've had this conversation before so many things are familiar. I remember you saying the one-of-a-kind dude thing, and I remember saying the word catawampus and... All of it? What's going on? Took you long enough to figure it out. Pages really are a slow burning class. Damn. Figure out what? Or figure what out? You're asleep. Oh, that's right. I fell off the platform day and I guess I got knocked out. Yep. So I'm dreaming? Kind of. It's a dream bubble. What's that? A place in the infinite abyss where sleeping people can share dreams with each other while revisiting memories. Also where they can meet dead people. I guess, just so are you dead or you're sleeping? So we are sharing our dream together? And you're currently asleep too? Uh, currently in the future? No. Even if I was, I wouldn't visit a dreaming bubble. That only happens when your dream self is dead. Like yours is. Mine is not. Hmm. I guess I understand. So what's the deal then? Wait. You said this is where they meet dead people too? Shit, Dirk, are you dead? Are you a ghost? No, dude, chill. I'm fine. Then what the fuck is going on? Who am I talking to? Well, who are the people you talk to when you have a regular dream? I don't know, parts of your consciousness? What? Uh... Like just a boring normal dream and there's a person you're talking to? Who is that? I don't know. It's nobody, just a projection of your own mind. Dream bubbles don't always need to be shared by dreamers or dead people. You can go to sleep and wake up in one alone, reliving an old memory. Okay, if this is part of his consciousness, this is way too smart. <laughs> Kinda like a normal dream. Until you remember it's just a memory, which is where we are now. Okay, so I am having like a lucid dreamy thing in a magic bubble and you are just like a figment of my imagination? Yes, basically. So I'm talking to myself? That's kind of stupid. Well, yeah, but not quite. You could view me as a projection of the real Dirk within your mind, as expressed through all of your thought patterns at the bottom. So I'm kind of a splinter of his corporeal self who happens to live in your awareness. I'm a startlingly close approximation to the real thing, for all intents and purposes. Just how startlingly close are we talking? I'm not gonna give you a bogus percentage like the glasses, cause that's not my shtick, but pretty damn close. Okay, that's fair, but man. There is something that feels kinda weird about this. You being in my head is a little messed up. What's messed up about it? You were the one who put me here with your intimate understanding of all his mannerisms and predicolations, and a splinter of existence is pretty much how he rose. This is how shit is, bro. Okay, I'm sorry for saying it's messed up, but... It's still a bit frustrating. I've been trying to talk to you all day, but all I get is your pesky responder bedeviling me at every turn and your freaking robot punching me across the ocean and then throwing a weird tantrum and ripping his nuclear heart out in front of me. And if that weren't enough, I tumbled off the doohickey and knocked myself out and now I'm strolling down memory lane with your fake brain ghost. It's like you are surrounding me from all sides with imitations of yourself, but never the real you. Cheese and fucking crackers, when do I just get to talk to the actual Dirk? Jake, what do you even know about someone's actual self? What makes it actual? What is actuality? What a horse shitty question. I don't know anything about actuality, I guess, but I know some philosoph babble horse shit when I dead blast it hear it. I'm just saying, this isn't really your field of expertise. Dirk is the heart guy. He's the one walking the path of self, even when he doesn't know it. Like right now. But what does that mean? And how can you really be made of only my thoughts when I don't even know what you're talking about sometimes? Or when I didn't know some of the things you're telling me, like about being in a dream bubble. How can I tell myself about that stuff through brain ghost Dirk? Who says you don't know those things on some level? I don't think I do. I have no business knowing those things. Pages have a lot of untapped potential. That's practically all there is to the class, actually. But when they eventually find it, look out. And the ones who deal in hope? Shit, man. I'm scared of you already, and I'm not even real. What if this is like another troll messing with him? I mean, it could be, right? Are you sure you aren't real? No offense, but I kind of get the same smartass vibe from you as I do from the responder. I don't think the responder can get in your dreams though, because that would be a very bizarre power to have. Like, har har, I have the same basic personality as Dirk but without any accountability or anything. So let me just be kind of flippant and mess with this Jake fella's head. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's a surprisingly decent observation about me. Yeah, see, I think I maybe did a little too good of a job brain cloning you. 
This is way too much like talking to the real fake Dirk. Holy cow, what a dumb sentence that was. You did a good job. A perfect job, in fact. Untapped potential, remember? I don't think one of Dirk's splinters could exist nearly as well in anyone's mind, other than yours. Well, that's just spiffy for me, but I'm starting to feel somewhat like I'm being haunted by you now. I just want to talk to my real buddy. And by real, I just mean the original guy. What do you even want to say to him? Oh, I don't know. It's not like you can keep any secrets from me here. I pretty much am your brain. Ah, no, don't say that. It's so weird. You do realize he's coming for you. Dirk, in the real world, the man has his designs. Yes, I know. Want to talk about it? With you? No. That's like... That's like talking to him about it, which is like really jumping the gun, I think. What better chance is there to try talking about it than with a stunt double for your hyper-aggressive suitor within the safety and privacy of your own mind? But I can't yet. I just can't. There are some feelings I'm not sure how to put into words yet. And doing it in front of you, whether you're a stunt double or a brain puppet or whatever, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. So there are feelings you don't want to try to put into words, even while you are dwelling entirely within the realm of your own mind? Yes. What is so hard to understand about that? What about the spider ghost? Huh? The girl you saw. When you got fucking clobbered by Dirk's robot and you passed out? You dreamed about a spider ghost alien girl? Oh yeah. What about her? You like her. Man, what? That's dumb. I saw her for three seconds and she waved at me and I woke up. Yeah, and it took all of three seconds for you to fall in love with a cute spider ghost. Why do you keep calling her a ghost? Cause she's been dead for a zillion years, dude. Oh, well, holy shit. That won't change the fact that you like her. Let's not pretend it will. You're gonna make things complicated for yourself. No, I won't. Yeah, you will. You're too fucking wishy-washy. Between Dirk, Spider Ghost, Jane? Man, poor Jane. What? What about Jane? You tell me. What was even the deal with that? Our last chat ended on very pleasant and amicable terms. She was upbeat and chipper as ever. I failed to see what reason one might have to feel sorry for her. Uh, yeah, you totally read her like a book. Really handled that conversation like a champ. Wait, didn't I? Look out, bitches. It's Jake Casanova, Lady Slayer, English. He's packing heat and is frequently able to parse the literal meaning of things women say. What are you getting at? We're running out of time. She'll be here soon. Jane? No, doofus. Spider ghost. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Where? Wait. She is? Oh, fuck. Look at you. I'm telling you. Three damn seconds of ugly and alien in a blue dress and you're completely hopeless. Stop fidgeting around like that. Your hair looks fine. Do you want me to tell you how your breath smells? Screw you! I am cool as such a cucumber. Okay, then. Uh, why does my breath not smell? Okay. You're dreaming, Jake. Your breath is only a thing if your brain wants it to be. Oh, okay. Whew. When is she coming? Why is she visiting my dreams? Soon. She's been waiting for the right time to enter, waiting for you to snap out of the memory. Clearly, the girl has the patience of a saint. Alright. Dang, it's warm in this dream level. How could I be sweating in a dream? Where did I keep the dream towels? Will you calm the fuck down? I'm a figment of your imagination and you're still making me nervous. This figment of imagination has quite the personality. But really, who is she? What's her deal and what does she want from me? Since all this so-called untapped potential in my subconscious taking the form of yet another sassy dirt clone seems to know everything, would it be okay if I troubled my own brain for a few flippin' answers? You should try to be more polite to me, seeing as I am a representation of your entire mind. I have complete control over all your basic functions. I could trigger a particularly spiritual bowel movement right before she gets here. So watch your step! Ah! No, no, no! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't! Just kidding, dude. Jesus. I would never make you shit your pants in front of a girl you like, even if she does happen to be my chief competition. I'm sorry, what? Your, bra your own brain is treating her as their competition? Okay. We Dirk Splinters can be pretty Machiavellian, but we do actually have some fucking standards. Okay, thank you for promising to keep my trousers tidy. Anyway, she's visiting now to bring you into the loop on some things. Important details you should know about your relation to the bigger picture. The much, much bigger picture. I still don't understand how you know... Or excuse me, my brain knows this stuff? Because I'm a page? How does that make sense? And also if you know the things she will say, why don't you just tell me the things? 
Intuition and the subconscious mind are powerful things when harnessed the right way. As for why I don't tell you, why not just let her tell you? You're the one with the damn crush on her. And she's here already. Okay, dude, she's here. Shush! I know. Oh, man. Um, What the fuck are you looking at me for? Say something to her, jackass. Okay, I will. I will. You're distracting me, though. Can you scoot over a bit? Oh my god, fine. Hi there, welcome. Uh, Don't mind him. He's just a brain clone of my best friend. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> Bro, she can't even see or hear me. You're making a fool of yourself. Wait, she can't? Why didn't you tell me that? You are really throwing me off here. I don't know, I guess I didn't think you were going to have a neurotic meltdown at the sight of a girl. I thought you were supposed to know stuff like that, seeing as you are literally my brain. God damn it, will you just chillax and woo this fucking ghost babe? How could I chillax when you keep talking to me? It's really disconcerting. You're totally embarrassing yourself, dude. You're talking to nobody. Man, I'm starting to feel bad for spider ghost. Look at her, she's getting uncomfortable. Shh, just shut up, I can't think. Awkward. <laughs> You're being so lame? I don't care if I'm a figment of your imagination or not, I can't take this bullshit. Either you get your shit together and put the moves on this dead space vixen, or I start fucking with your cortex and make you pop a dream boner. Oh god, no, don't you dare. You don't think I'll do it? No, please, please, please do not give me a boner, Dirk. Sorry, Jake, the plan's in motion. Next stop, Boner City. So that was the plan all along? To give me a boner? And you. Got one. You motherfucker! Oh. Oh, teehee, a false alarm. I see a very funny cool guy. I think you are full of shit. You're bluffing. You don't even have the power to give me a phantasmal erection. Jake, please. Members of the Juggalo party aren't the only ones who can pitch a big tent. Then go ahead. Make my fucking day. Dude, don't jinx it. I'm ready for you. You think I'm afraid? I'll take your border magic like a man. I'm not ashamed. I will stand tall and proud at full mass in front of this pretty alien. Do your work, you bastard. This is so stupid. You are out of your mind. And this is coming from your mind itself. I can't even watch this, I'm out of here. Well good riddance to erotic hipster douchewad rubbish is what I have to say about that. I wonder what Jack's up to right now. What? I mean, what? Who's Jack? Just talk to the girl, okay? You have some damage control to do? Uh, Jack start jailbreak adventure? What? Random. <laughs> Random jump to one version of Jack. You wake up locked in a deserted jail cell completely alone. There is nothing at all in your cell. Useful or otherwise. Ah, oh, hello! There's many useful things right in front of your face. Jack, attempt to pry open window. There are no objects around with which to pry open window. Look at that. This frame is precisely identical to the previous frame. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you have has nothing whatsoever with that dumb idea. Do you realize this adventure is nearing 5,000 panels? And now we have to watch you flounder around in a jail cell for god knows how long. Exactly how many panels do you want this to go on for? Over 9,000? Nobody wants that. Nobody even wants to hear the phrase, over 9,000. You need to begin making better decisions if you want to escape. Jack, get key. Also, this is like a really tiny transporterizer. What, did you not understand about the statement? There is nothing at all in your cell, useful or otherwise. There is no key. Who is saying these dumb things? Is it- oh. Well, that's awkward. You tricked me. It is an extremely crude drawing of a key on the floor. Really, the drawing is so bad, it's ridiculous to think that some prankster thought it would fool you. Which it did. Whoever drew this key clearly was employing the most primitive drawing tools available. You are obviously being fucked with in this stupid jail cell. You expect that you will continue to be fucked with, and it makes you wish you could stab something. Jack, get pumpkin. There's no pumpkin. Okay, now there is a pumpkin. <laughs> What fucking pumpkin? There is no pumpkin. Once again, there is nothing at all in your cell. Useful or- Oh god damn it. Okay, a pumpkin appears. You guess it must be feeding time for the prisoners. These propi- These prospician jails are like luxury suites compared to the penal system on Durst. Should be the softest time you ever did. Wait, so you're not- You're in jail on prospect? For... I don't know, for probably for everything you did. Jack, consume pumpkin. Duh. What a horrible idea. You, can't, you, can't, you don't eat fresh produce. The thought is revolting to you. What do you think these sharp teeth are for? Or what's left of them at least. You'll have to make a note to file a protest with your lawyer. Complain of cruel and unusual treatment? Their cuddly criminal justice system will undoubtedly see to it you are given some proper meat to consume. Perhaps a prime cut of filet mignon as if you are a guest of honor? What a bunch of powder puffs with all their nabby, pabby morals and compassion. This kingdom makes you sick. Jack, look out, window. 
You step up on the little Kirby thing to get a better look outside. Can't make a plan without getting your bearings. <laughs> is this like just one guard guarding this freaking prison tower? A lone sentry is on duty below. You shout a few obscenities his way. You wonder aloud what a guy has to do to get a decent meal around here. Hey! You're talking to that guy. It's no use though. He ignores you. Just look at that stoic face. The unshakable discipline. The stalwart sense of duty and pride. This is what it means to be a member of the Prospician Royal Guard. What a little shit you grumble to yourself, but loud enough for him to hear. I bet the guard is like not even paying attention. They're just like daydreaming. Jack, inspect Pumpkin. That guy won't be of any use. You doubt you could even manage to lure him into your pissing radius. Magnificent though it is. Give the pitiful gourd a little kick. A terrible thought occurs to you. What if you have no choice but to eat this awful thing? You can't let it come to that. You have to get out of here. Hold on. What's that? Jack, take a closer look. What the hell? Please look inside. Who sent this pumpkin? Eureka! Droll, you beautiful bastard. Looks like he snuck something inside the pumpkin to help you escape. Probably a bomb? You're going to have to remember to give him a promotion when you get out of here. Or at least reduce his daily newspaper floggings. Need to think of a way to get the bomb out of there. Can't just smash it with your foot, or it might explode and take your leg off. Too bad they confiscated your knives, or you could slice the thing open neatly. Maybe even carve a funny face into it. Hehe. <laughs> you bet you're the first guy who ever thought of doing that. Jack, search for carving apparatus. Where, dude? This is- Is this a jail cell with nothing in it? Have you not read the memo? Hang on. You remember seeing some pointy things just outside the window. Luckily, both kingdoms are totally covered in pointy things. Can't swing a dead cat without impaling it on one. Jack, take pointy thing. Uh, I'm sorry, what? You could just break these off and take it? You snap up a golden pointy thing. Should be sharp enough to do the trick. Jack, carve pumpkin. It slices through the meat of the vegetable like a sharp spire through the through thick squash. This is working so well. Who the hell needs a trusty knife when you are this resourceful? Screw knives! You take it back. You can't stay mad at knives. Jack, open it. You can taste your liberation already. You can't wait to hear the sweet ticking of the bomb that is definitely in there. That will be the sound of freedom, you decide. You pull off the lid to reveal... More knives! <laughs> oh, a whole bunch of knives and some weird thing here. You're welcome! Dumb, Dro! You're so... you're so dumb! <laughs> God damn it, Dro! Oh, I can't stay mad at that guy. <laughs> so dumb. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Although now that you think about it, he might be by default since he just sent you all the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh well, you can probably get some use out of these. You've never once been disappointed to receive a pumpkin full of knives and you're not about to make an exception. Jack, empty pumpkin on floor. There's also some weird poster in here. You take a quick inventory of the smuggled contraband. Hold on. Looks like he snuck something else in the pumpkin under all the knives. Something... compromising. Jack, examine compromising material. Terrier fancy? What the hell is this? The drill knows what it's like spending long cold nights alone in the clink. A man needs a little reading material to keep him company, if you know what he means. If your skin wasn't made of polished jet black carapace, your cheeks would be turning bright red. No one can ever know about this. You must destroy the evidence. Or disguise it somehow. What? That you like dogs? Jack, forge blade out of illicit literature. How? Even? <laughs> you have enough knives! Why do you need to make another one? <laughs> None shall be the wiser. It is the perfect crime. I don't know about that, dude. It still looks pretty obvious. When you bust out of prison, you should be locked right back up again because of how perfect this crime is. Jack, throw a knife down there to get that guy's attention. Or, you know, just assassinate. <laughs> that should get the guy's attention. Or kill him? <laughs> Unfortunately, it only keeps his attention until he dies, which is almost instantly. You need to come up with a better plan. While you would argue that random stabbings are their own reward, they aren't getting you any closer to escape. Jack, examine exit. That door is locked tight. You're going to need a key to open it. Preferably one that isn't horribly drawn on the floor to taunt you. Jack, knock on door. Watch it like not even be locked, he just walk out. <laughs> Maybe if you knock hard enough, in just the right way, at just the right time. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, no. Not yet. Wait for it. Wait. Jack, now. 
What? How even? These conveniences are amazing. Your clumsy fist accidentally flies through the bars, knocking out a passerby. Keys from his key ring jangle on the floor. Hey, there's another one here. It's quite possible one of those keys will unlock your door. Uh, unless you're that person from The Incredibles, I don't think your arms can reach that far. But they are all well out of reach now. What next, genius? Jack, use knife to snag one of the keys on the floor. Uh, unless your knives are like able to connect like markers, I don't think so. You see if a knife can adequately lengthen your reach, but it's no use. They're still just outside of their of your modest slashing radius. No dice. Ne he just stabbed another dude. <laughs> no dice. Need a different approach. Wait a minute. Another guard notices your unauthorized tomfoolery and radios for backup. Jack, beckon other guard over. And he comes over. I swear they're so dumb. He looks none too pleased by your misbehavior. This will surely result in reduced rations. You can expect to find a slightly smaller pumpkin in your cell come sky arise, mister. You keep beckoning him. Just a little closer. A little closer. He's gonna end up murdering everyone, but he's still gonna be locked in the jail cell. Jack, convince second guard to pick up keys for you. How? Are they really that dumb? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You use a little persuasion to see if you can get him to- Jack, no! This is not how you convince someone to do something. You're supposed to save the stabbing until after you intimidate him into doing what you want. How exactly is a dead guy supposed to pick up some keys for you? And another one comes, oh my god. Real smooth, Jack. What's the plan now? To bury the keys under a grown pile of torsos? This is turning out to be the second shittiest jailbreak attempt anyone has ever seen. Jack, look around room. It's a huge jail, huge jail cell. The only remaining thing in the room worth noting is in the other corner of your cell. Just a transport pad prisoners are supposed to use as a race receptacle. These were decommissioned in Durst prisons a long time ago. Too many prisoner suicides and severed heads showing up in the waste bins? What the hell? None of those auto decapitations were authorized with the right paperwork, so privileges had to be suspended. You hear the door open and slam shut. Someone else is in your cell. Jack, welcome guess. With a stabbing? Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> Looks like the sentry phoned downstairs for a little muscle. It's one of the regulator lugs they use to keep the gen pop in line. This guy has an itchy baton wrist and that look in his eye you know all too well. He's not leaving in this room until one of you is good and bloody. Jack, be the other guy. That guy? He dead. I think you're gonna be the, big, the other big guy. You attempt to be this guy down here, but you can't be this guy down here because he's dead. But it does serve as a convenient cutaway for the vicious beating that is currently taking place in your cell. We don't need to be watching that kind of prison brutality. We take our sweet time looking at this dead body while terrible noises can be heard from your prison cell. Okay, that should be long enough. You can stop being this guy now. Jack, stop being that guy. Oh, what? How? He's too good, man. You stop being the other guy in time for us to see that you have just finished quickly and cleaning, subduing the... Jack. Jack. The man is dead. Stop that. Jack. 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 Jack, apologize to guard's body. I mean, look, he dead. <laughs> you start to feel sorry for stabbing that guy with seven knives in the back and bashing his face into the door 89 times. Well, maybe not all 89 times. For the first 88, you felt pretty good. But by the 89th face bashing, you were definitely starting to feel pretty sorry. I mean, sorry, you guess you mean bored. Anyway, you mutter something under your breath that could easily sound like an apology to someone who wasn't listening very well. Jack, give Guy a proper funeral. <laughs> what, what, what? More stabbings? Whatever the state of your contrition might be, there can be no question about it. A man dedicated to royal service deserves a proper and dignified funeral. However, since there is no casket in your cell that is nearly big enough for this lug's hefty torso, you will have to improvise. Uh, please tell me you're not chopping his body up. Jack, seek alternative casket. Oh no. <laughs> you decapitate him! You sever the guard's head with your most trusted of all trusty knives and begin sizing up that hollow pumpkin. It would definitely be snug, but you think you can make it fit. Jack, make it fit. Jack is like literally just a like psychopath, psychopathic killer. You don't care what anyone says. You say this pumpkin was made for this fucker's melon. Fits like a damn glove. Jack, close it up. I hope no one's gonna find that. Perfect, a textbook burial for a man of honor and distinction. 
The sacrifices made by our public servants don't get anywhere near the respect they deserve, you think? Jack, bring Casket over to Receptacle. Oh no. I, I don't know who's gonna get that, but <laughs> sucks to be you! His funeral will not be complete without a proper send-off, but a stinking garbage dump is no place for the head of a brave soldier to rest. No, you must first make some modifications to the device. Doing hard time behind bars will motivate a man to learn a trick or two when it comes to systems like this. Jack, pry open panel with knife. If you could have done this all this time, you could have just wired it to get yourself out of here. You open it up and switch a few wires around. There. Now instead of a nasty old pile of rotting pumpkin matter, the destination should be the throne room of the Prospician Palace. Oh no. Surely the queen will want to be alerted to the noble sacrifice of this brave warrior so that arrangements can be made to honor the can be made to honor the hero. Jack, send him off. Oh no. It's not gonna be pretty. <laughs> Look inside. You hear the door open again, followed by the sound of surly footsteps. Could it be that another glutton for a good face face bashing has decided to visit your cell? Jack, Greek visitor. Oh no, there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> ah, you see, it appears there are quite a few sad sad gluttons this time. Settle down, gentlemen. There are more than enough face face bashings to go around. Jack, quick, be the other guy again. <laughs> Dude, how? You be the other guy again while they beat you senseless. Other guy, be Jake. Well, that was weird. Suddenly, you aren't the other guy anymore. You couldn't quite be the other guy anyway since he's dead, even though deadness hasn't really stopped us from being guys before. Nevertheless, the dead guys start being Jake, who is not a dead guy. Well, his dream self is dead, but his non-dead, non-dream self isn't. And that's the guy we're being. A guy who is asleep. That non-dead sleeping guy is present presently talking to a non-sleeping dead ancient spider ghost who long ago earned the achievement batch, Gif of Gab, and boy does she know how to use it. What is a Gif of Gab again? Okay, in any case, before we attempt to get a Gab in edgeways, we are gonna end the episode here. I don't know what the heck that weird Jack intermission was all about. And what, like, Jack is that? I assume it's just uh, some random Jack from like the alpha timeline. So he probably killed, uh, he killed both Jake and... No, actually he didn't kill Jane, right? He killed Jake, stream himself, so that's why he's in jail, I assume. And then he just like kill. He's just like killing all the guards. It, I'm like, I, I, I could, it's like seriously, he could escape like any time, I feel like. But for some reason, he's just in jail, murdering people. I don't even know. But in any case, before we see Jake's and um... What's her name again? Arania? conversation we will leave this episode here so thank you guys so much for watching this and i will see you all in the next video